Okay, I think we can get started. Welcome everyone. This is writing command line tools for Drupal 8 modules. Thanks for coming. Just want to introduce our speakers today. Um, Greg Anderson from Pantheon. Uh, he's the open source developer there. Um, Jesus Manuel Olivas, Drupal 8 solutions engineer at FFW. Myself, an open source developer, Moshe Weitzman, longtime Drupal contributor, and Daryl Norris, a Drupal engineer with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Right here. Okay, um, we're talking about uh, command line tools and how you write your commands uh, for your Drupal 8 modules. Um, the goal um, of us as command line developers um, or command line framework developers is that it should be easy for you to write your commands. Uh, they should be brief, they should be simple, um, and you should have access to the parts of Drupal and the parts of the command line runner. Um, easy and familiar access to those parts of the system. A Little bit about the agenda today. Um, you're gonna learn about Symfony console commands um, and about a new innovation in Drush called annotated commands. Um, which is new for Drush 8 and Drush 9. Policy files um, for ways you can adapt uh, other people's commands. Um, output formatting, command discovery, and um, configuration of commands and generation of different parts of your uh, Drupal modules and uh, commands. Want to um, just briefly summarize some really recent changes uh, in Drush. Um, we started in the um, Drush 8 and Drush 9 uh, branches to support Symfony console commands. Okay, so you can write straight um, console commands and run them via Drush. It'll show up in Drush help and uh, all of the arguments and options will be shown there and will be passed through. Okay. Um, as a layer on top of that, you can run, you can write annotated commands for your modules um, and we'll show you more about that later. Um, and finally, uh, the very familiar drush.inc files, um, command files, are still uh, possible with Drush 8, but we have deprecated and won't uh, run them for much longer in Drush 9. Okay, so that's, uh, that's where the Drush system is right now. Um, we have representatives from both uh, the console project and the Drush project here, um, and just want to kind of give people an orientation about some of the differences uh, between our two projects. Um, on the Drush side, on the left-hand side, um, we're working with annotated commands, um, show that they're short and readable um, and optimized for those things. Um, the Drupal console system's optimizing for uh, straight Symfony console command class usage. Um, and so everything you learn from the Symfony documentation uh, will work fine for Drupal console commands. Um, I think I'll hand this over now. Uh, Jesus. So, the Symfony console provides a lifecycle flow for method execution. So you can have configure method, you can have initialize, you can have interact and execute. So interact is the place where you will ask questions to the user. You when you are, it's the place where you have to play for. You know, this is you want to do this, you want to do this other, you want to do something else. And the execute part is the method where you put your logic, well, which you mean execute your logic. But I mean, the best practice to do this is to take all that logic and put it into a service and inject the service into your command. Just to decouple components and make it easier to update and maintain. And those commands are registered into an application object, and this is the one who takes care of executing those commands. Cool, I think it's your time to work. All right, so this slide shows a uh, Symfony console command command that has uh, configure, execute, and, and demo, as Jesus said. And all of this works equally well in Drush and uh, Drupal console now as of the recent changes we've made on the Drush branches. Uh, but we've also started experimenting with a new way to configure your commands called uh, annotated commands. And this style actually started in WP where they used annotations to describe the parameters and the help text and it all came together as, as one uh, 
easy to read unit. It was this really nice development experience. So this, that was adopted by Terminus, and there's also something called the RoboPHP task runner that's adopted this. And uh, now we're also bringing this into Drush, so as an experimental feature. Um, so I'll, I'll emphasize that for Drupal 8 module writers, we're recommending that you stick with straight Symfony console commands. So if you'd like to experiment with this, or if you'd like to make internal commands, um, then just go ahead and use the annotated feature. So th this first slide shows an example of an annotated Symfony console command. An annotated command is a new class that extends the Symfony console command. So everything you see here is exactly like the Symfony console commands you're used to using, except that we have replaced the configure method with a, a, doc, a PHP doc block comment that shows you what the command name is, what the arguments are and the defaults, and things of that nature. And this is all you used to generate the help text. So it now has shortened your command a little bit. You can actually take this one step further, and rather than using a Symfony console command, you can use what we call a command handler. And a command handler is just a plain old class. It doesn't have to extend from anything, but uh, it is a class, so it can participate in dependency injection, as we'll see later. And the methods of this class can be annotated with a command annotation that names what the command should be. And then the command runner, Drush, takes care of processing the inputs from the command line and passing them in to the parameters of your function. And once again, the help text is all generated for you, so you just have this really short, canonical, easy to read um, file. And we're certainly going to be evangelizing this upstream in Symfony. We don't really know whether they'll like it or not, but um, we're gonna be moving along in that direction. The other thing that we have here that interacts or integrates with annotated commands is the command processing pipeline. So this is something that has been in Drush for a while, but we're bringing it forward to the object-oriented world. And again, we're in um, experimental feature space. processing pipeline starts with a validate step, then your command is executed, and after your command execution happens, the results from the command goes through the processing pipeline. I'm not going to talk a lot about RoboPHP here, but I will mention that in Drush 9, we are basing our runner on uh, Robo, so if you return a Robo collection of tasks, then those tasks will all be run as part of the pri pipeline. And the reason that's cool and interesting is that each stage of the processing pipeline can be affected by hooks that you add with annotated methods that I'll show you next. Uh, so in the process phase, you could add additional tasks that run whenever someone else's command runs, such as uh, SQL sync or, or whatever, and Robo provides a rollback mechanism so if one of the tasks fails, all of the tasks that were added have a chance to roll back. And that just keeps everything really um, nice and clean. And then once everything has been processed and altered, it goes through a formatting engine to do all sorts of things. So here's a quick example of a hook. Uh, once again, you just put this in any command file that's located anywhere that Drush finds command files. You put a hook annotation on it. And uh, in this particular example, I'm showing you the command hook, which is the name for an ordinary sim uh, symphony command event listener. So if you tag it with this hook, your method will be called with the console command event 
parameter and you can manipulate it any way that you would in a normal uh, command event listener. For those of you who aren't familiar with this interface, it gives you methods that allow you to change the options or select a different command that's going to run or just stop the command from running altogether or uh, whatever you need to do. And uh, of course this feature being part of Symfony, there are other ways you can inject this interface using the Symfony APIs, but this is a much uh, cleaner and simpler thing. In Drush, a lot of people have made use of what we call a policy file. We have an example folder that shows you how to do something with a policy. You just take that policy, you copy it to your home.drush folder, add whatever code you want, and then you can do things like stop people from shooting themselves when they try to SQL sync to their production databases, you know, wh whatever policy controls you want to put in. So we're trying to keep that equally simple uh, but also make it possible to integrate with any Symfony command that can be run by that runner. Output formats. It's wonderful to have a command line tool that gives you lots of information about the deep internals of your Drupal site, uh, but if you're using a command line tool, chances are really good you might be sending that data somewhere else. You might be in Bash, you might be typing it to something else. It might be awk or sed or split or whatever. Different tools take different formats. So since Drush 5, we've had an output format system where it makes it really easy for command authors to support different fields. Um, we're bringing that forward in Drush 8 and Drush 9 with annotations. So this is an example of a command, um, and I'm only showing the, the field output annotations here in addition to your other command annotations. You can just add annotations and say what the field labels are. And the neat thing is down at the bottom, you have a regular PHP returns annotation. So the whole system looks at this return annotation, it knows what data type your command is returning, and from that, it can infer which output formats are available. So when you run the help command, it'll say, aha, you are doing a row of fields, and I know how to take row of fields and turn that into a table. So I'm going to use table as one of your options as an output formatter. If you look at the method body here, you can see that the output data then is just a simple array. Each element of the array is a row, and each row has elements that are various cells on that row. And then down at the bottom, we wrap it in a row of fields object, which is nothing more than a class that extends a PHP array object, so it behaves like the array that it wraps, but now it can be used in type hinting in the formatting system so we know what's going on. So what can we do with that? So on the left, you can see an example of what a format table looks like. This is just a normal symphony table object that formats the data. And on the right, I've shown you the same output formatted in YAML. So it looks just like the array that the function was returning. It gets even cooler than that, though, because it's also possible when you're doing table formatting to select which fields you want. So here in the example, it's using the human visible labels three and one, and you put them in the reverse order, so it selects and reorders the tables in whatever order you want to show them in. Some commands in Drush have very, very long tables with lots of fields, and only a few of those are showed by default, um, but you can select which ones you want to see. On the right, we've just made it one step better now in Drush 8 and Drush 9. This never worked before, but you can now mix your table selections and your output formatter. So first, you select fields 3 and 1, then you format it as JSON, and you see only the fields you selected in the JSON format. And we have a whole pile of output formatters just available for your use, so as a command writer, you don't have to think about formats at all, you just get them all for free. Um, now the other thing I'll mention about this finally is that even though I showed you this as an attachment to annotation commands, obviously all of these functionalities have a, you know, classes and methods as a normal API, and uh, we're going to be working after this session to roll this feature 
architecture into Drupal console so that you'll be able to take advantage of uh, output formats in your console format as well. So in Symfony console, um, they have this thing called the uh, Symfony style, which is very similar to what Greg was talking about, which is the output format, uh, which allows you to which provide you a way to input and output uh, input data and output messages. Uh, um, <coughs> and I'll ask you to ask questions and you can also provide default values, for example, yes or no. You can also um, provide an array which is gonna provide you different type of choices where the user can choose and also they can select it by pressing the arrow key. Uh, you can also display this data um, very similar or what he showed, but the difference in here is gonna be that you're gonna have two arrays, one for the header and one for the row. Um, you, can, you can also take advantage of this uh, symphony style by, by outputting a, a verbose way to display messages. You can display warnings, messages, success messages, listings, and errors, and with different colors. No. Oh, I think there's a slide. Yeah, Corey. Corey. Yep, let's get my title slide. Okay. So another new innovation that is very new and most of you probably haven't seen yet because this is literally only within the past couple of weeks is uh, we're changing the way the command discovery is done for modules uh, commands in both Drush and Drupal Console. Our friend Larry Gar Garfield says, outside of a factory, access to the dependency injection container is almost always a bug. Now you see this all over the place where someone will go just in deep in some field and it'll grab the container from a static method and that's often necessary because you're dealing with legacy code. But you'd rather not do that. Whenever possible, you would like to have your dependencies cleanly injected from the container at construction time. And Drupal 8 has a whole system designed to make this cool and awesome. And wouldn't it be cool and awesome if you could take advantage of that in your commands too, so that your commands didn't have to go and root through the Drupal system to pull out all of the different dependencies you need? And uh, the answer is that now you can. If you go into your modules uh, services.yaml file, you can now declare all of your command classes as services. And since these are services, they can take part in the regular Symfony dependency injection and get all of the different pieces they need injected into their constructor. In this example, uh, I'm showing you the services.yaml from a patch that I submitted to the default content module. And this patch runs on both Symfony console and Drush. And what it does is um, the default content has defined its own service, you can see at the top, the default content manager, where they do all of their work. And now we have three commands, three command line commands, and each of those take that content management manager object as a parameter that's injected into their constructor. And uh, then you can see down at the bottom it says tag, so it's a tag that says name console.command. And from that tag, uh, We'll search for all of the services that are tagged as console commands. We instantiate those, and when we instantiate them, they get injected properly. So it's all clean and modern, and this is where, uh, how we're recommending that you implement your commands here out. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to go next. Get out. I have to yeah, get well, out and go back in. Yeah. While working on that. An advantage of doing something like this is we, s we save a lot of, I mean, we improve the discovery method, so instead of filing, searching for the file system for commands, we use the, this little tag that you can see here, like something like console command. This, we find by that tag on the container, and we discover those commands on the s register on the system. So any new module adding new commands, register as services, will be automatically discovered by the tool.
I think this is working, I think so. Fortunately, we're ahead on time, so you can afford a little bit of a break while the internet does its thing. Is your coming, is yours working? Mm, it's not, okay. not this one. Leave the thing to me. Yeah. Ah, is that correct? Yeah, there you go. Which we that one. Good mind. Yeah, a lot of the events always happen like this. It's back. It's back. It's back. There's only a couple slides left. It's back. Just look at that. It's not. Oh, it was back. Yeah, it's not in percent mode. Finalizing what Brad was mentioning, the same discovery method is using in, in both projects. Let's let's jump into the the same configuration and generation. And um, same as a Drupal 8, Drupal Console provides a possibility for subscribe to certain events. So we have events for running before the command gets executed, while the command is executed, or at the very end. So we can use both methods for different things. In this particular case, we can use before the uh, command execution, so we can ask for a configuration. We provide configuration files that you can put in different places, and based on the file is stored, it will take some, it will gain based on that. So you have, can have configuration files globally in your home directory, this is one place. You can have configuration files set in the root of your Drupal site. So you can have some, whoa. <laughs> Oh, there you go, it's back, it's back, it's back. Yeah, it's this. You guys are amazing. Okay, go over back. And based on that configuration, you can set, you can stop commands to be executed. Let's say we have a command for, we have a lot of generators in Drupal console, and you don't want, you don't want to run those generators in production. So you can stop for loading those commands just by changing the configuration. Let's say we might be have, we are handling a project using Composer, which is the way to go. So you can set default options in that configuration to force all of your download commands and download added modules on. For to use Composer instead of going to Drupal.org and download that file for you. If you pass that option that was console, Composer in that configuration, it will force to use Composer and eventually will download for it there from the packages and also will update your Composer JSON file. 
and you can way do more things with that, like probably before command execution, you can add messages for, I mean, for the user output. We use that a lot on the generators to tell you which files were generated. Okay, let's jump into automate command execution. As, I mean, we, as well as, as you can, I mean, do event listener for command execution, command execution, Drupal console provide a chain command. This chain command allow you to read a uh, YAML file definition, as you can see here, or you can set different commands to be executed. You can set those commands, and you can also set the options you want to use. So basically, you can create your own recipes of commands to automate your pro all of your process. You can have something like, I wanna, in this case, what is happening is I wanna run site new, which is basically will download in Drupal for you. Then it's I'm setting the argument, in this case, I mean, this dot, Drupal 8 dot dev, which it means I want to use this directory to download my project. And instead of passing a version, so you don't have to force this to a specific version, you can say something like latest equals to true, which it means all will get download the latest version for you. And you can do this for every single command, I mean, Drupal, Drupal console to implement. And as well, in the final section, you can see where we are running the site install command. In this case, you can see some these little, I mean, strange signs there, like where the DB type and DB host is. So those are placeholders. So you can set placeholders, and you can either set default values for those placeholders or passing in lines. So you have two different types of placeholders. The ones you see with the person signs, it means that could be passed online or use the default value. If you don't set a, if you don't pass a value via inline command execution, it will throw an interaction question for you. What's the value you want to assign to this specific placeholder? And once you set that, that value for the placeholder, it will set to the command option or argument, which is this link to. And their last one is in the dollar sign. In this case, as you can see, is a different, is a, is a difference, so this is dollar sign, not person sign. That one will allow you to read environment variables. You might be, you maybe don't want to put your credentials in your configuration in the system, so you can put those values on the environment system, and you can use a chain command, make, takes care of the automation of installing Drupal, and reading those values for the system. And on the right side, we can see the differences. So again, the person sign, it means it's, it's, you can provide a default, you can set inline, or if it's not, it will ask you for you. The other one, the value is always required, if not, we'll throw an exception and the value must, must be preset via the environment variable. And you might be asking when you can start writing I mean, more CLI commands with Drupal console. You can do it now. You can do it by using this generate command command. So we basically provide you with a command to generate commands. This is an, an example of how this command should run, something like Drupal generate command. And you can either let this command run in inter interactive mode and asking you questions, or if you wanna save time, because I mean this tool is kinda do it for doing something like that to save you time so you can focus on what you, what's really important for, for, for your project or your organization, you can set all those values in line. Something like in this case, module, example, I wanna make the class, the command class for something like awesome command, and I want to do this command to be awesome. It means the class name, this is what we have as awesome command, but the command name, how, how will be listed in your in your system when you do something like Drupal list for listing the commands, this is the name that will show that awesome. And you can take advantage of the um, injection services. Remember what Greg was mentioning about, about or commands for both system, system register those commands as services and you can take advantage of the of injection services from the container. So this is the option you will use to inject those services. So you can pass the services name here on the dash slash services option to inject those. And this generator will take care of getting those, those for you and inject it in your command. If you run this from interactive mode, what it happens, it will get, it will discover all those, all those services from the Drupal site that you are working with and will list it for you using the symphony style that Daryl was mentioning, and you will be able to use arrow keys to select those from the system, and you will select one or many as you want. And finally, you see the no interaction mean option. It means I don't want this command to do any interaction. In this particular case, you can do either no interaction or inter interactive. And I highly recommend you, if you don't know which options to pass when running commands, instead of, instead of doing, uh, trying to, I mean, trying to guess which options are, you can either go dash dash help, or you can run the command and pass, pass the option dash dash generate inline, 
and that will be output at the very end of the command execution, the inline representation of that command for you. If you want to add a command to a YAML file in order to use the chain command, you can do the same thing. Execute a command and do something like dash dash generate dash chain, and that will that will output for you the you know the the YAML definition that we can see here for your command. And finally, in order to do those commands, you don't have to worry about where those commands are. If you run the chain command, the system automatically will discover those for you. We have specific places like the home directory, the module, the module directory, and the system, the default site. I mean root directory, and those commands will, will be discovered for them. And I think that's all, right? Yes. So in closing, I'd just like to say that um, you know, the Drash team and the Drupal console team have been working together trying to uh, unify our efforts and reduce the amount of duplicate maintenance we need to do and um, try to figure out where we can share functionality uh, best we can. So immediately after the session in room 292, we're going to have a BOF on command lines where we invite you all to come and ask all of your questions and um, provide suggestions or feature requests for the future. And um, of course, don't forget the general sprints that are going on all weekend. Um, and finally, if you have any uh, technical questions about things that you were today in this presentation. We're going to be opening up the mic right now, um, but leave any of your questions about you know, the future or what we've decided for the BOF because you know, we're still working on that, and so the uh, answers to those types of questions are going to be more complicated and we'll need more time. So with that, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Question. Oh, there might be a switch on there that you can turn on. That's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I was curious, what's the status right now of the 9x branch of Drush? Like, is it for, develop for developers now? Can you use it on a site? Well, the, the 9x branch is in development, and uh, typically the Drush maintainers use master every day for their work. Uh, the way it's working right now is the 9x branch is using all of the old legacy drush.inc commands unless you uh, specifically address one of the newer commands and the newer commands have colons in them instead of minus signs. Um, and there's only a few of the newer commands, so it's a very, very new branch. Um, you know, it's basically usable, but you're gonna have a much rockier ride on the 9x slash master branch. We are maintaining the 8x branch so you know, only stable bug fixes and things of that nature will go back there. So we really recommend most people check out 8x or a stable tag. Right, so re related with that, my second question is the, the goal is to get rid of the drush.inc support in 9x, correct? That's right. Okay. So you have a lot of time with 8x because um, you know, Drupal 7 is going to be around for a long time because with the new architecture of Drupal 8, um, it's going to be a while before Drupal needs to go to Drupal 9. And so the fact that Drupal 8 is going to last a long time means that Drupal 7 is going to last a long time. So Drupal 8 will be around to support Drupal 7. Um, so this gives you a lot of time to work in the 8x branch and convert your module commands for Drupal 8 into Symfony console commands so that by the time we actually DOL the Drush 8 branch, you should all be over to Symfony console. a lot of you in the BOF after this. Thank you very much for coming. So we have a few stickers if you want to preserve yourself. Yay, stickers. Yeah. We all love stickers. <laughs>